So it just came out that Twitter was looking at monetization of adult content because Twitter, as you know, is the one large social media site that actually allows porn and adult content as long as it doesn't depict violence or any illegal content. So it's kind of funny how Twitter is used as a platform already for a lot of adult creators just to distribute their content or just to gain a following which they can then funnel to the explicit stuff, right? But it hasn't really figured out the monetization because Twitter mostly depends on advertising, but it hasn't figured out a type of subscription model or a different way without depending so much on the advertisers. OnlyFans obviously is doing extremely well. They're making billions in revenues. In fact, they're projecting about two and a half billion this year and Twitter's 2021 revenue was only twice of that. So they're already making half of what Twitter is making just with adult content. So if Twitter could figure out how to monetize that, it would solve a lot of their problems. Just have a cash cow in addition to what they're already doing, which is the adult content, and they already have a lot in the platform and reduce the reliance on advertisers and then they can also invest more in cleaning up their platform because right now if you were to know the actual number of how many accounts are bots and how real is the engagement how many eyeballs are actually on twitter then this could harm their business right because they rely on advertisers but if they actually rely less on advertisers and they have this cash card which is the adult content they can have subscription like only fans then they could solve a lot of their problems so i thought why haven't they done this it's kind of crazy so they investigated that they had an adult content monetization project they had a red team of 84 employees who were trying to investigate is this a feasible model can we have a subscription model they already implemented something similar they already had these paywall subscriptions but very early on they ran into one important problem twitter seems to be really really bad at content moderation so i read in a verge article which gave a very nice summary of the whole situation that the amount of money that mark zuckerberg put into facebook in 2019 just for safety features and content moderation exceeds the whole revenue of Twitter. So Twitter in comparison to all of the other big companies are really bad at content moderation, especially when it comes to audiovisual content, especially when it comes to child safety. And I'm going to keep this video clean. So I'm not going to say any of the keywords that the YouTube algorithm is not gonna like. So let's say they have a very hard time figuring out if you have adult content that you're posting on Twitter or maybe behind a paywall to figure out do the people in the video all want to be there and what is the age of the people and could the age be too low they have a lot of issues with that and you can see how bad this is going to get if they would basically allow at scale people to upload a lot of footage and suddenly they have a lot of legal issues because they have certain type of content which you all know is very very illegal so what i find funny is two things number one is that a company like OnlyFans can come along has a lot of trouble raising any investments had to reach profitability fast because nobody wanted to invest in them they have this one investor who's basically the owner of the company the ceo stepped down this company had a lot of trouble but they figured out the verification process and the moderation process to make sure that everybody on this site is verified and that you have legitimate content there right and there is no exploitative content and so on but the fact that they have figured it out and twitter hasn't figured it out is completely insane i'm wondering what they're doing with their money because the fact that they haven't figured that out when a small startup that basically Basically, where the management team fell apart as they were growing and scaling with no investors they could figure it out and Twitter can't figure it out that's insane and the other part is that this didn't show that Twitter isn't good at this particular type of content moderation this has just revealed that all of Twitter's content moderation actually isn't very good so in the Verge article you can read it there were a lot of details about what type of technology they use and that what they use apparently is very outdated or maybe stuff that is just using image databases in order to find content Content that is not okay which obviously means that the content you have on your platform has to match something that's already in a flagged database which is very unrealistic because most of the content is going to be original it's not going to be flagged on any platform so you need some type of ai or some type of manual moderation in order to flag this and there were also cases where twitter just left video of obviously whatever underage people online explicit content and they didn't take it down for over 24 hours so let's look at the quarterly earnings because you can see the breakdown of the revenue so this is three months so this is one quarter just ended june 30th so you can see 1 billion for advertising this is their main revenue and then subscription other revenue is 100 million so obviously 10 to 1 you can see that they heavily rely on advertising but this is the same for facebook right but facebook figured out the scale in a different way and facebook also has more of an ecosystem with all the other apps and all the other marketplaces that they have which fair doesn't have so just the fact that they depend on advertisement isn't a bad thing it's not ideal no company wants to fully depend on advertising because then you 
you open yourself up to a lot of conflict between the advertisers and the content creators like on YouTube and so on. And then if you look at the operational income, you can see that this year they're definitely at a pretty substantial loss. Last year they were barely profitable. So 30 million was their profit from operations, obviously. But yeah, I'm wondering what's going to happen with Twitter because this company seems to have a lot of trouble and it's not going to catch a break. And the problem is that they depend heavily on advertisers. And the reason why they can't make the investments they should make in content moderation, automating content moderation and innovating in the space, right? Right now, they're just lagging behind all the other companies and all the other technologies. So they can't really develop a new business model if they don't invest and they can't invest if the advertisers are pulling back. And now they're in this public scrutiny where the exact number of eyeballs or bots is going to be revealed, right? If that result is negative, the whole Elon Musk thing, right? If this leads to the conclusion that Twitter is actually a place that isn't good for marketing, that isn't that great, then this might hurt the company really, really bad. So I'd be very curious to see what happens with Twitter because I don't think if that company is in decline, anybody would come in and buy that because it's actually quite big or pretty expensive. So the richest man in the world can make an offer, but which other person or corporation would want to make an offer for Twitter, right? Especially with all its limitations. So one fun thing that happens, apparently this was in January 2020. This was a Twitter employee meeting, one team, whatever. There isn't really much. I found this clip on YouTube where Jack Dorsey is basically interviewing Elon Musk just for a few seconds. It was like a special guest. This was a Twitter event and then he secretly got Elon Musk to come in with a video call and then he briefly asked him a few questions. What if you were to lead Twitter? I think this is hilarious insight that he actually made an offer now. And Jack Dorsey stepped down, right? He's not the CEO anymore. This is a very interesting moment in history. Was, um, give us some direct feedback, critique. What are we doing poorly? What could we be doing better? And what's your hope for our potential as a, as a service? If you're running Twitter, by the way, do you want to run Twitter? <laughs> what would you do? I think it would be helpful to differentiate between real uh, and you know, like, is this a real, a verified, like a real, not just like verified, but like, is this a real? His sentences are so broken up. I wonder how it is when someone has to live translate what he's saying, he always starts a sentence and he does another one. Or is it a, a botnet or a, a sort of troll army or something like that? Um, you know, so. Maybe there's like, you can say, okay, what are the comments from, basically how do you tell if the feedback is, is real or someone trying to manipulate the system or, or probably real or probably trying to manipulate the system? So some way to differentiate between, uh, this is, this is a, a, a real person versus a, um, you know, this is someone trying to just uh, gain, gain the system. Um, but like, you know, I see like, and I'm sure you guys say it all the time, of people trying to manipulate the system with, with, with just, that they're trying to sway public opinion. Um, and, and sometimes it can be very difficult to figure out what's, what's real public opinion and what's not. Um, you know, what do people actually want? What are people actually upset about versus? Yeah, I think this is pretty troublesome. This is the whole verification thing. I still can't believe that OnlyFans figured that out and they can't figure it out. This is kind of insane if you think about it. And I also wonder what Twitter is doing because if you look at all the other companies, they make pretty big moves, but Twitter seems to always be Twitter. And I don't really see them innovating the business model too much. Well, at least a company like Meta or Facebook buys other companies like, for example, Oculus, and suddenly they have hardware sales in addition to that. Company like Snapchat makes similar moves, right? But Twitter, I don't know. It really seems like they're kind of rotting away because they're not really innovating that much into their content moderation tech and to trying to figure out how to verify users and all of that. Because they're not doing that, they might actually become irrelevant very soon because the customer experience at some point is going to be really, really bad if they don't sip up the game with that. Um, manipulation of the, of, of the system by various uh, interest groups. Um, and there are many, many such groups. Um, that was it. That was a whole clip I could find. Still very interesting because I would believe they are friends, right? Now I think Jack Dorsey was also subpoenaed because of the whole legal argument now between Elon Musk and Twitter. I have to say of all the CEOs, it was very tough to find anything from Jack Dorsey. Obviously, he's not the CEO anymore, but the new CEO doesn't say anything. But Jack Dorsey is really careful about what he's saying because I was trying to find some things about Jack Dorsey saying something about adult content, about monetization options. He is really good at not answering 
answering any questions at all, only talking about the topics he wants to talk about. I didn't find anything of him talking about business model, talking about what they could do, like interesting stuff, stuff that any CEO would talk about. But he didn't talk about any of these things, either because he generally didn't care about innovating in these things. And he was just trying to keep Twitter, Twitter. He just trying to kept it as it was, you know, instead of trying to innovate or because he was innovating, but he didn't want to talk about. It. I don't know, but he seems to be really good at not revealing anything at all. So let's go back at a clip, which is like from this Congress hearing, where at least they talk a little bit about the moderation. And as I said, I think moderation is the biggest flaw of Twitter that might actually bring them down if they don't fix their content moderation. If they can keep up with other companies, then all you need is a competitor, even something like True Social, if they figure out the content moderation some way or a different company, they could just take all of the traffic from Twitter, then they would be in real trouble, especially if they rely on advertisers. Advertisers are going to run really fast if the rumors and the cases and the lawsuits against Twitter start to rise because they can't even remove illegal pornographic material and stuff like that. This is a really dangerous space for Twitter at this point. So let's look at how Jack Dorsey answered about content moderation. We see a lot of abuse and harassment, which ends up silencing people and having them leave from the platform. Why did Twitter make the decision to censor the New York Post? Uh, we had a hack materials policy um, that we- When was that policy on. adopted? Uh, in 2018, I believe. In 2018, go ahead. What was, what, what was the policy? So the policy is Ted Cruz always looks like he wears eyeliner. I don't know what his, it looks always so black. I don't know if he uses eyeliner it would actually be hilarious. It's around um, limiting the spread of materials uh, that are hacked. Um, we didn't want Twitter to be a distributor for hack materials. Um, we found that the New York Post, because it showed the direct materials, screenshots of the direct materials, and it was unclear how those were attained, that it felt that it fell under this policy. Now, we, so in your view, if it's unclear the source of, uh, of a document, and in this instance, the new <laughs> he gets angry. So once again, the politicians, you can't give too much attention to them because they try to just look good. He's trying to appear angry. And obviously his salary depends on him appearing like he has the more high ground. But in this case, he's right. Because Jack Dorsey just said that we have a policy against hacked materials and there's material that we couldn't confirm was hacked or not, but it fell under the policy, which didn't make any sense. So it could could have fallen under the policy, but it didn't because they couldn't confirm that it was hacked or not. So they just assumed it would be hacked. The last time I watched that clip a year ago, I was just thinking, okay, he's just trying to push the blame away, trying to explain it away. They intentionally censored that and they wanted to censor that, but they just need an excuse and they say, hey, this is hacked material. But now I'm looking at it differently because now I'm looking at Twitter as like this rotten foundation, which is basically almost falling apart because their advertisement dollars really rely on the content on the platform and the people using the platform but the content moderation is so bad that this whole house of cards could fall apart so now i see it as they probably legitimately had someone tell them hey you have to censor that story this is hacked or this is false and they just did it without thinking about it i'm not even sure if jack dorsey heard about it at the time because they probably are so afraid of bad content that they would rather censor something or get rid of something to keep the advertisers rather than having something on the platform and then later finding out that they should have censored it, right? Because it takes a lot of time to have a nuanced look at all the content, but it's very easy to just over censor and to save time. Now I see it more as incompetence rather than malicious intent. New York Post documented what it said the source was, which it said it was a, uh, a laptop owned by Hunter Biden that had been turned into a re re repair store. So they weren't hiding what they claimed to be the source. Is it, is it your position that Twitter, when you can't tell the source, blocks, blocks press stories? No, not at all. Um, we, our, our team made a fast decision. Uh, the enforcement action, however, of blocking URLs, both in tweets and uh, in DM, in direct messages, we believe was incorrect. And we changed it. Today, right hours. now, the New York Post is still blocked from tweeting two weeks later. Yes, they have to log into their account, which they can do at this minute delete the original tweet, which fell under our original enforcement actions, and they can tweet the exact same material and the exact same article, and it would go through 
So this shows you how bad the technical side of Twitter is. This shows you how horrible the internal workings are, including the content moderation then. So they have this high profile case. They over-censored it. They acknowledge that this was incorrect, that they over-censored this. And now there's this newspaper, this organization, this large company. They can't tweet anything, right? And now they say, no, you have to delete the tweet, which we accidentally flagged. And once you have deleted that tweet, you can retweet the exact same tweet with the exact same content and then it's going to go through. How incompetent can a company be that they actually are telling the customer that they have to do something even though they themselves made a mistake? They should solve that on their side. So your ability is you have the power to force a media outlet. Let's be clear. The New York Post isn't just some random... Okay, Tech Truth doesn't have much time, but he doesn't even catch that. This is ridiculous, that the fact that he is forcing the New York Post to delete their tweet. Are they running this company? Do they have IT support? Do they have a person who can... Hey, can you please unflag that tweet? This can't be too hard. This is not a blockchain. This is a centralized technology. They should be able to have access to all the servers and can make the changes they want to make. Is that right? No. That the U.S. military is to blame for COVID remain up for two months without a fact check, and the president's tweet about security of mail-in ballots get labeled instantly. As you mentioned, we did label that tweet. Um, as we for many months so this is this is at height of COVID right and you're right hey the US government is responsible for COVID this is at a time where everybody who mentions the word is getting flagged no better way to say it right and they left that up for two months so this is almost embarrassing that you have such a large social media company that is not good at content moderation and content is their bread and butter this is not a company that is whatever doing sport events and then they have a lot of content they have to moderate that too content moderation is all they do and they've been around as long as all the other companies so it's crazy that they didn't have this long-term vision and said, hey, if we have to step up our game with content moderation, this is not going to work out. We think about enforcement. We consider severity of offline, of potential offline harm. Um, and we act as quickly as we can. Uh, we have taken action uh, against tweets from world leaders all around the world, um, including um, the president. And we you can't argue with his success. He's doing a great job. And I think he is also doing a great job with the other company. And maybe there's a reason why I left Twitter, because maybe there were just things about the advertising model that he didn't expect, that he didn't like, and that he maybe had a really hard time navigating. Because there are also other interviews where he talks about, hey, if we had blockchain when we started Twitter, then we probably wouldn't rely on advertising now. So I think the advertising model is something that is really tough for companies because it creates really weird incentives and it makes scaling really, really difficult. Mr. Dorsey, do you believe that the Holocaust really happened, yes or no? Uh, yes. Yes. So you would agree that someone who says the Holocaust may not have happened is spreading misinformation, yes or no? Uh, yes. I appreciate your answers on this, but they surprised me and probably a lot of other Coloradans and Americans. After all, Iran's Ayatollah has done exactly this questioning the Holocaust. And yet- I'm not laughing about the Holocaust. I'm German, we all know the Holocaust was completely horrible. I'm laughing because Jack Dorsey is like, he's scolded. He's like, yes, yes. He has to say yes. And, and, and now he has something ridiculous again, because obviously they are just bad at moderating. Yes, there's probably also a double standard where they try to adhere to the cultural differences at certain locations. And I say, hey, in this country, this is how they deal with the truth. And this is how they deal with the truth there, whatever. Or this is what they accept as history. And this is what they do not accept and then they have to adhere to that but i think a lot of these things are just incompetence in handling all of the content moderation which is by the way an almost impossible problem so you have really really big companies and even youtube content moderation for the comments there are things that are just not handled and you wonder how can youtube not handle that how can google not handle that for example spam there's this one spam message i see on almost every of my videos i put out and it always comes and always flag it as spam and it's almost always the same always the same text right and google obviously is very good when it comes to tech. So how is Twitter going to compete with that? His tweets remain unflagged on Twitter's platform. Uh, can you name <clears throat> any other instance of Twitter hiding or deleting a tweet from heads of state? Uh, not, not off the top of my head, but we have many uh, examples across world leaders around the world. Would you be willing to provide a, a list of those? Absolutely. It's strange to me that you've flagged the tweets from the president but haven't hidden the Ayatollah's tweets on Holocaust denial or calls to wipe Israel off the map. Does Twitter maintain a formal list of certain accounts that you actively monitor for misinformation? 
No, and we don't have a policy against misinformation. We have a policy against misinformation in three categories which are manipulated media. Okay, he, he just contradicted himself. We don't have a policy against misinformation. We have a policy against misinformation in three categories. That's the same thing. Uh, public health, specifically COVID, and civic integrity, election, in, election interference, and voter suppression. That is all we have policy on for misleading information. Uh, we do not have policy or enforcement for any other types of misleading. Hacked material is what they kind of came up with for the New York Post, right? Hacked material is also that. ...information that you're mentioning. So somebody denying the murder of millions of people uh, or instigating violence against a country as a head of state is not uh, categorically falling in any of those three misinformation or other categories Twitter has? Not misinformation, but we do have other policies around incitement to violence. Uh, which which may yeah it is sad because now I really see it as incompetence I think also there's a language form because the spam message on the videos I mentioned they're always in German so I think as soon as something is in English I think it's much easier to counter moderate because so many companies are working basically just in English and all of databases are in English so for the AI it's much easier to flag things in the context or understand the context of something but as soon as something is Arabic or Chinese I think then they run into a lot of trouble and I'm very curious to see how Twitter's counter moderation section going to improve new york post story is part of russian disinformation or that those emails aren't authentic do any of you have any any information whatsoever they're not authentic or that they are russian disinformation mr dorsey we we don't you have no so so why would why would you censor it why did you prevent that from being disseminated on your platform that is supposed to be for the free expression of ideas and particularly true ideas we believe to fell afoul of our hacking materials policy uh we judge he now appears a little like a school kid who just didn't do their homework and they just copied it from someone else and now the teacher is coming and saying why did you write this this was bad you shouldn't have written something like this and you didn't write this you just copied from someone else and now you have to make something up oh well uh, this was a uh, part of the policy at the time i thought this really hit the story narrative but well, what evidence did you have that it was hacked they, they weren't hacked we, we judged in a moment that it looked like it was hacked materials. He, he didn't read the book. We're wrong. Surfacing and, and we updated our policy and our enforcement within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. let, let me give you a tweet that was put up on, on uh, Twitter. It says, Senator Ron Johnson is my neighbor and strangled our dog buttons right in front of my four-year-old son and three-year-old daughter. The police refused to investigate. This is a complete lie, but important to retweet and note that there are more of my lies to come. Now, we contacted Twitter and we asked them to take it down. And here's the response. Thanks for reaching out. We escalated this to our support team for their review, and they have determined that this is not a violation of our policies. That tweet was was retweeted like something like 17,000 times and viewed by over and loved, commented, you know, appreciated by over 50,000 people. How is that not voter suppression? How is that not election interference? How is that not a, that, not a I think at that point, Jack Dorsey was like, I think I'm gonna step down. It's not fun. I think I'm gonna focus on crypto now. So, so I would imagine that he doesn't really believe in the mission anymore, that he doesn't think that this is going to turn into anything great. With Jack Dorsey and Twitter, it seems like he was like, Ugh, he's just going away. All right, let's see what's going to happen with Twitter. Can they figure out another business model? I'm not too sure. Can they handle the content moderation? I actually see a very, very bleak future for Twitter. I don't know what's going to happen. Thanks for watching.